excites me about this production of The Crucible is I feel like with our design team and our actors, we've really created a really striking uh, visual production of this piece. It's going to be extremely intimate in the Los Altos Stages Bus Barn Theater, and what we're, we're doing is creating this extremely visceral experience. The Salem Witch Trials, I can only imagine, when they were actually happening, must have been this wild and you know, really unnerving time, and what we're trying to do is uh, put the audience in that experience of the Salem Witch Trials, make them feel that uneasiness that the people who lived in that time must have felt. I think the most important aspect of Abigail and her role in society in the scope of the play is in another world she could have been somebody completely different. And she lives in a world that breaks her from the moment that she's born, that keeps telling her that she can't, that keeps telling her that she shouldn't, and she is very smart, she is good at leading people, and she has been living in a, in a world that, that makes it so that she, ha that she feels that her only resort is something deadly and something extremely wrong. She is so comfortable with who she is, um, and you know she molds herself to fit inside this framework. But as soon as she gets outside of that, she knows exactly what she's capable of. John's a very complex guy. Um, at the same time, he, he's actually rather simple in 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 what he wants. He uh, his biggest struggle, I think, is is mostly against both himself and his where he stands kind of in his belief system. He's very staunchly trying to be a good person and thinks that that's possible, but at the same time um, makes a couple mistakes along the way that instead of just kind of correcting, he then has to kind of hurt himself to correct or really never correct. Um, and, and that's kind of his biggest struggle, I think, is, is being able to let go of his own transgressions. Walking into my first moment on stage, she's going through a lot. She's she's angry. She's distrustful. She's worried. Uh, that sinking feeling that you know something's up, but you're not sure whether to bring it up or not. Um, as a woman, I feel like that happens. We get these gut feelings sometimes, and um, we never know whether it's really okay to um, address it or to just you know you just want to kind of throw it in the back of your mind and say, oh, it's not a problem, and, and I'm, just, I'm just being ridiculous about it and, and irrational or whatever. And I think that that's really where Elizabeth is at the top of the scene. Uh, so I worked with Abigail on her movement for different scenes throughout the show, um, and so uh, the types of movement that we worked on plays different roles. Um, we worked on uh, what we call the bird sequence, so when they're fake being possessed by Mary Warren in the courtroom. And for that... A uh, particular scene, and Jeffrey and I talked a lot about uh, the challenge of making the scene look convincing enough uh, to to Danforth and the others who um, have been fooled by the act, but also not making it uh, so well rehearsed that the audience would leave thinking, "Wow, they're actually uh, maybe they're actually witches. We don't know." What we're doing with the uh, with our production of the Crucible is really trying to sort of take it out of the period and time in which it is set during the Salem Witch Trials and, and push to the forefront the, the language that Arthur Miller provides us. The Crucible's scary uh, today, I think because it's still relevant today. Um, I think that's what, what makes it a um, timely piece to do right now, but also a, a scary piece to do right now because there are still so many of the... Um, pieces of it that ring true to society uh, and governance today that we dealt with in the 50s when it was being written and in the 1600s when it, the actual events were happening. It, it, it's really shocking how relevant it is. Not only is it this historical story about Salem witches, um, and a lot of it is rooted in so much truth, but it was originally written as an allegory for McCarthyism. Um, and the fact that it is exactly what's going on now, who is better than who, and uh, the people that, that deserve things and the people who don't deserve things, um, I think all of that is wrapped up in this play.
because there's always going to be situations where you, where one feels like the people in power are not listening the way that they should, or the people in power are twisting information to make it seem what they want to seem. Uh, there was a poet that was written um, by a Holocaust survivor that starts, uh, first they came for the Jews. And it goes along, first they came for the Jews and I did nothing because I was not a Jew. Then they came for the socialists and I did nothing because I was not a socialist. And then finally the man says, and then they came for me. And by then there was no one left to speak. And I think for me this play really touches on the idea that everyone becomes a target. Uh, they start with the low class and then it uh, moves up to the higher classes. And I think it speaks to why action is needed when the vulnerable are attacked and why um, it's important not to wait until you're the target. The Crucible is a super important show. Uh, it always has been. I think it kind of always will be. Um, so in that sense, uh, it's very important to see. And ours is going to be far and away the most original take on this classic story that you've ever seen.